Hi, I'm Chris Bournet, and I'm the director of the documentary Lady Wrestler, the amazing untold story of African-American women in the ring. The documentary chronicles courageous African-American women who broke boundaries in professional wrestling in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s. The documentary centers on three sisters, Babs Wingo, Ethel Johnson, and Marva Scott, who were among the first African-American women to integrate pro wrestling. Now, for those of you who may not be familiar, Ethel Johnson was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame on April 6, 2021. And in this special edition of the Lady Wrestler podcast, the family of Ethel Johnson, her eldest daughter, Shelly Adams, her niece and the daughter of Marva Scott, Kim Goodwin Martin, and Babs, Ethel and Marva's granddaughter, Micaiah Goodwin, speak out about some issues that they believe need to be clarified regarding Ethel's induction into the WWE Hall of Fame. So without further ado, here's the interview. Well, first of all, let's tell everybody, you know, your your relationships to the to the ladies, to the to the wrestlers, just so, you know, for those who may not be familiar. Okay. Okay. My name is Shelly Adams. I am Ethel Johnson's eldest daughter. My name is Kim Martin. I'm Marva Scott's only daughter. My name is Makaya, also known as Renee on social media, and Marva Scott is my grandmother. What do you feel like are the, the facts and the, the actual facts that need to be cleared up? Okay, so the first fact needs to be cleared up is that Ethel Johnson was not the first African-American female wrestler. Babs Wingle was the first African-American female wrestler. My mother was the first African American female champion. Right. So those are the first facts. Now the the one of the issues I have with WWE that they need to correct is they inducted her as the first African American female wrestler. She needs to be inducted in as the first African American female champion. And if they want to induct someone as the first African American wrestler, then they can induct Babs Wingo as the first African-American female wrestler. Right. And the WWE did not contact anyone in the family. They did family. not contact anybody or say anything that they were even inducting anybody in. So I didn't get any contact from anybody until after I reached out after the, I saw what they had put up um, to induct her. Right. And let me interject. The reason that we really found out is because of the social media piece, right? And the social media piece was my niece, Micaiah. And we heard that, you know, they had put up the wrong information and we saw for ourselves where it was the wrong information, the wrong video footage, at which time my cousin Shelly called WWE, right? And yes. I, I contacted WWE. Uh, uh, Mr. Mendel called me back. Um, I told him what the errors were in the video that they had. Um, he said they were going to correct it. Um, they didn't know when the corrections would be made, but he recently reached out to me um, on the 9th and said that they had made the corrections. However, I can't find um, the original advertisement or video. The link. Yeah, the they link. still didn't they send didn't the, write link the link. They didn't the link, so I don't know actually what they corrected. Yeah. And so Babs Wingo is our aunt. She was right. the first one. And so we just felt like the WWE embarrassed us and disrespected their legacy in front of the worldwide audience by giving her the wrong title or the wrong award, by using the wrong footage. It basically erased the history of our Aunt Babs. It made us feel very disrespected. They didn't reach out. They had the opportunity to do some research and look it up. Chris Bournier, who you're doing our interview, actually did a documentary. Babs and Ethel soon distinguished themselves from the pack. In 1953, Babs wrestled world wrestling champion Mildred Burke before a crowd of nearly 9,000 fans in Kansas City in what was billed as the first interracial championship. And for them not to reach out and to ask for footage, is totally disrespectful. And then for them to tell us, hey, we're gonna correct it, but we can't do it until we get time, knowing full well this is WrestleMania weekend. The whole world was watching when they disrespected our family 
and disrespected history. It's not just a family issue, it's a history issue. Correct. And they disrespected history, Black history, American history, and world history. Everyone needs to know the truth. It appears that Bianca Blair is a setup. I hate to say it, but I have to tell the truth. Some of the things that she even says sounds just like my Aunt Ethel. Not to mention, I noticed that she wore a Black History robe in one of her matches. Black History Maker, the history has already been made. Our family not only paved the road, they made the road for anybody else to come across it. So to come across it and not pay homage and to use my aunt's name for the wrong award, again, is very disrespectful. And quite frankly, it hurt us as a family because they have been exploited for years. And so it's finally time that it stops and we cannot allow them to change our history. It made me feel like, Chris, they thought you were a small movie maker and we're just three little people and they're this big organization and therefore they could take and do whatever they want with our history. That's totally unacceptable. And I feel like they thought they could get away with it this year because they used my mother's picture last year and called her number 51 of the greatest African-American wrestlers ever. So for them to say that they did not know the story is a total untruth. I think they got away with that. So this year they said, let's do Ethel and let's make up our history. So when we come to you as a family and we tell you we want the history correct, then we expect the respect for them to correct the history and not to think because we're small people that they can do whatever they want with it. So we really need help from the public. Like we really need help so that we can document our history and secure it in the history books and in every hall of fame all across the world, not just here in the United States. After all, my aunt had a very great name in Canada. My mother was in Japan. They've been all over the world, Australia, Cuba. They're known worldwide for their history. And to tell us that the biggest fight was yesterday when they just erased Billy Wolf's history. He was the first man to integrate wrestling, which meant my Aunt Babs was the first woman to ever fight for the championship against Mildred Burke. That history was already made. Now everybody is just rolling on the history like it doesn't exist. So I do need big people to help us, small people too. But Chris, you're a small time person in their eyes, but you are huge to us because God sent you to us to follow this story. God brought us here. Our parents are coming from the grave to say it is enough. And so historically, we cannot set aside and allow people to disrespect our history and to change it to fit their needs or to fit, quote unquote, what they got going on in wrestling today. That's why we're here. And we're hoping that through this interview, people will understand why we're so upset. Our Aunt Babs was the first female wrestler under Billy Wolf to ever hit the mat for a championship against Mildred Burke. My Aunt Ethel was the first ever Negro champion. That's what she was called. That meant that she wrestled other people for her title. She wrestled white and black. So there was no, this is the first major match. They were selling out arenas. All we ask is that you give them homage and be honest and truthful. But instead, they took the legacy and decided to twist it and then gave us an old bogus, hey, we'll take it down excuse instead of correcting it. So if you go to their website right now, there is nothing to see about the legends. Why is that? Tonight is the final night of WrestleMania. You disrespected our whole heritage with that clip of Sandy Parker, who wasn't Ethel Johnson. Wrong video. Right, the wrong video. Yeah. The and, and most famous moves that she was always known for. We sh they showed another video of another woman doing that uh, move. So that, that famous that it, it was standing drop kick. It was hurtful because that was not my mother. That was not Ethel Johnson. That definitely need to be statement needed to be made public that they put 
put out the wrong video, the wrong person. So that hurt my feelings a lot. I, I there was no words I could say to him to, to, to let him know how I feel, except for it was wrong. So I'm really upset about the video. I'm upset about her being inducted under the wrong title. I'm upset that they're taken away from Baz Wingo, Ethel Johnson, and Marva Scott's legacy. They were the first African-American sisters to wrestle at the same time before the Bella Twins. That has not been addressed. I'm upset about the whole, there was no, they're just making it seem there were no black wrestlers before this that happened. There were two black female wrestlers wrestling before this happened. There were integrated wrestlers before this happened. This night happened for his WrestleMania. So I just feel like if they come out, apologize, recognize the history before, and then we can move on. But the fact that they want to wait till after the big worldwide audience is gone to make it right or just do a blip, that's unacceptable. And we're standing here to say it's unacceptable. And we're hoping that people like Spike Lee, Oprah Winfrey, uh, Shonda Rhimes, Regina King, LeBron James, some of the athletes, some of the professional people, even our state people, Joyce Beatty, what's his name? Um, Herschel Craig. Who? Herschel Craig, our state representative. Herschel. Yeah, uh, Sh Shannon Harden, he's African-American, first African-American president of city council here in Columbus, where Columbus, Ohio was the hometown of, you know, your mom and your aunt. So yes, wow. it's not it's not just the WWE, it's our, it's our legislators and and the, the, the city and the state that need to recognize them with some kind of proclamation or resolution as well. Absolutely, you know, and they need yeah. to support us in making it right on the national and world level. They need to support us in doing that. They need to realize that some of the things that they took to make Bianca again, they making us talk against her. We don't know her, don't have anything against yeah, her. Yeah, definitely don't have anything. You know, and, and want to celebrate, could have celebrated with her, but instead of them making sure that people did their research and coming to us, we could have stood with her. She could have had them on the back of her jacket, like my aunts, my, my niece said. My niece is the one who's taking all the heat for even blowing it up, you know? And the fact that they think that it's okay and it's not okay is the problem. It's our history and our history needs to be accurate. Yeah, and I, and I appreciate everything you're saying because for example, when the New York Times did uh, you know, the write-up about your mom, Shelly, um, you know, it was a while after she passed away, but the New York Times contacted me so I'm obviously not hard to reach I'm you know all over correct, social media correct correct you know the the New York Times article is pinned to every social media platform I have so even if they couldn't you know find ways to reach out to you all you know the New York okay. Times reporter reached you Shelly through through me I'm, I'm not hard to reach and this history is not difficult I mean there are there are wrestling fans with blogs and Facebook pages that have this history. So obviously it's not difficult. You know, consult Google. <laughs> Google has Google. this history. And if you want to go further than Google, there's Jeff Lean's book, who I interviewed in the documentary. Jeff Lean wrote an entire book about Mildred, Mildred Burke, the first world women's champion. She was white. Her husband was Billy Wolf, the promoter, as you mentioned, Kim, who was responsible in the 1930s. We're not talking about 2000 or the 90s, that recently, we're talking about the 1930s. Billy Wolf established the first women's wrestling uh, organization here in Columbus, Ohio. And who were the first black women he recruited? Babs Wingo, who then recruited your Aunt Ethel, who then recruited Marva. So yeah, this history is not hard. The University of Notre Dame, where I went for the research and where Jeff Lean, the author of the book about Mildred Burke referred me to, they have a huge, huge wrestling archive with press clippings with all, with all of this stuff documented. So this is not this is not like ancient Egypt where you have to go back and do a dig to try to piece clues together of, oh, what did Nefertiti say to Cleopatra? And, you know, right. who, who had the scepter first? Let's, let's try to, you know, do DNA tests. This is stuff that's very, very well documented. The, the most casual wrestling fan, like Ken, Kenny Clark, who's, rec, who's interviewed in the documentary, know this history. So the true genuine fans, have the history and those who are just finding out about this history, they, they wanna know the truth. So yes, absolutely, we need, we need to clarify. 
Absolutely. Well, it made me feel like, Chris, when they did that, that they didn't want to give you homage to the history that you had done. That's how it made me feel. It made, you know, it was already insulting. And then it was like adding salt to a wound, you know, and we have open wounds behind our mothers and our parents doing what they did and being used and, and exploited. But the history that they made is bigger than all of that. And so for someone to feel like they could come in and take your story, that is a true story, and make a storyline was very upsetting because one of the things that my mom always said to me is, I love the story. However, people come at me and want to know what my life was like as a wrestler. But when I tell them they don't want to pay for the story, they want to make money off of the story, and then they write me out of the story. Well, today, we don't care about money. We care about history. You will not write our relatives out of the history books. And you will put them in there properly because it is everyone's history. Everyone's. But again, my niece is taking the heat. So I just want to tell her thank you for doing it. And I want to know what was it that made you decide to stand up? Um, well, seeing my aunt upset, um, and I was upset too when I seen it. So I don't know. I just felt like they was reaching to me from the grave, you know, and we were sitting and having breakfast at the time. And I just got on my Twitter and I seen, you know, WWE tweet, you know, I seen them tweet it. So I just, you know, reacted and I just, I had to respond. And then from there, it was just going up. And I do appreciate, you know, all the fans and everybody that was helping retweeting, you know, we all as a unit, but if it wasn't for that, I don't even think they would have even cared. You know, I don't, right. they only care when something blows up, you know, and it's made articles and everything. So if it wasn't for that, I'm not even sure if they would have tried to even change it. Well, they retweet, they, they erased the, the tweet. When she tweeted, they retweeted and they erased it. But, you know, this is social media. So we got copies of all of that. In other words, we got our receipts, right? Yeah. We have there's, a digital, there's a digital trail you can't erase, even when you you, can't erase that. you know, and, and, and for everybody who's mad at my niece and who wants to send her threatening stuff and say all kind of mean and derogatory things, tweet that to God, because God is the one who put my parents, Shelly's mother and my aunt Babs in the position way before we got here to break history and make history. And God has also put us in a position to protect their history. So if you're upset, take it up with God. That's all I can say. Because um, some of the stuff and the racist stuff that's coming across and everything is very disrespectful and it's hurtful, right? But just know, God, we didn't ask to be here. The WWE brought us here when they used my name, aunt's name, gave her the wrong award and used the wrong video clip. Up until that point, we were living our lives, watching your movie. So if people want to know the truth, then they need to get your movie. The story of three sisters that wrestled together. The Lady Wrestler by Chris Bournier. Like we said earlier, they could have reached out to you too. But if people want to know, my aunt says it in her own words. We are not lying. We don't have to prove anything. You guys help prove it right so that we can get these history books straight. Yes, well, first of all, I wanna thank you, Kim, Shelley, and Micaiah for your bravery and for speaking out. But I do wanna say this, you know, and, and I, as I was saying to you earlier, Kim, I so appreciate the trust that you all have invested in me because trusting your family's legacy with someone, that's not some, something that I take lightly, but I have to say, this is not my story. This is, as you said, Kim, this is, American history, it's, it's world history. And I think the reason why so many people, no matter where I've gone around the world, you know, I went to the Cannes Film Festival. I didn't actually show the documentary there, but I got to, to go there to promote the documentary a few years ago. And I, would I met Viola Davis's husband there. I told him about anybody I've met from any country, they are fascinated by your mom and your aunt's story. And you know why? Because it encompasses so many basically every aspect of the American story. It encompasses civil rights, it encompasses race relations, 
It encompasses women in the workplace, women in sports, feminism, um, women trying to work and raise families, um, you know, sexism, racism, gender discrimination, uh, yeah. women breaking boundaries, sports history, women's history, Americans history. That's all encompassed in your mom and your aunt's story. So people all over the world are fascinated. And it's not a story, it's not a story that I own. I'm just, you know, as you said, it's just I'm the conduit that God chose to tell the story, but it's your family's legacy and it's everybody's history. Nobody goes and says, um, you know, Martin Luther King's history belongs uh, to, you know, the NAACP. And the NAACP is the only one who can tell Martin Luther King's story. That, you know, it's it's everybody's story. So yes, the the facts, they need to be clarified because yeah. this is history. Yeah. My niece yeah. brought up something else when she talked about what really made her made her sick of it. It's all the exploitation. You turn on the computer, they got video games out. Okay, how come you didn't call us and reach out to invite us to accept the award on behalf of my aunt? We could have sat right here like we're doing this Zoom call and she should have got it. Okay, but you didn't call us because you knew what you do, were doing were wrong. So I'm just going to call it like it is. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. They had plenty of time to get the information. They decided to put out what they wanted to put out, and that's how it went. But what they put out was untruth. When they called my cousin, they should have straightened it out right then and there. It shouldn't. It should be on the site with a big apology while everybody's celebrating this historic event that happened last night which happened years ago already. So I want to let them know that we are not happy about it. And I do need the support of other people that are in this industry who know about it, who know about how history is taken, who knows about how people take uh, someone's image and likeness and decides to make video games and do whatever they want and use it when they want, but not to use it in the proper context. We're no longer accepting that. We as a family are no longer accepting it. And we want everybody of the wrestling nation to stand with us and tell them it's unacceptable. Tell the truth. It's unacceptable to erase black history, period. Yes. And period. it's very hurtful, Chris. Like, like we sit here holding back tears for real because as black women, it is difficult. But knowing what they went through during the times that they did it, and for somebody to just basically stomp their foot at it or snub it or just treat it like it's any old thing and put any old video like we all look alike when they're 25 years different, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's just an insult. And to say that she's the, the first African-American champion when her sister, I mean, the first African-American wrestler when her sister was, is wrong. She was the first Negro champion. No one can take that from her. Give her her dues in the Hall of Fame. Make it correct. My Aunt Babs was the first woman to ever wrestle an integrated match. Give her her props. She was the first one. My mother was the sister. They were the first set of sisters to ever hit a match. And they wrestled as tag team and against each other and against anyone else. So they paid their dues and they built the road that Bianca and everyone else that is black and a female in the wrestling industry is in. And they should take the time to get educated so that the next time this doesn't happen. So I'm telling them, get educated, get educated. So when you accept an award and you think you're making history, no, the history has already been made. What I'm doing is I'm walking on the wings of Ethel Johnson, Bad Wingo, and Marva Scott, because that's what's happening. Well, let, let me ask you all this. What can the WWE, what would you like to see them do to, to rectify the situation and to kind of set the record straight? What Ideally, what would you like to see them do? Well, we would have liked for them to done it. We would have liked for them to take the clip, right? Put the right stuff in the clip. We didn't tell you to take it down, right? Just put the right stuff in it. You should have put video footage of her doing her drop kick. That's what you should have used. They could have contacted you for photos. They could have contacted you for input and information. They could have even taken some clips out of her movie to use. But they didn't even call us, Chris. 
So what do we want? We want just like they did it in front of the whole world. We want them to do it right in front of the whole world. So for them to do it after WrestleMania, the whole world ain't watching. The matches are over. The matches are over. So I guess we really have to figure out what is it that they can do? Well, first of all, they need to correct everything. I don't think Shelly's received anything in the mail saying that her mother got an award. Correct. I haven't received anything. Didn't receive the call. Didn't even know it was happening until somebody else reached out to me. And uh, like I said, when I asked him, um, why weren't we contacted? He just said that we didn't have any way of contacting you, which again, they could have contacted yeah. you because they knew who you were. So yeah. I, I, I don't know what to say. It, it, it's disheartening. It, it, I'm sometimes like I'm speechless because it's a shock Very to speechless. my system that they would try to erase Black history. Yeah. And that seems to happen to us as a people all the time. They're not even mentioning that the first African American male wrestler was Bobo well, Brazil. It took so them to in 1993 to put him in. Right. So he it, wasn't even inducted till 1993 into the Hall of Fame at the WWE, like an afterthought because they did Andre the Giant. And everybody knew if it was Andre the Giant, it had to be Bobo Brazil. But Bobo Brazil carried the dreams of millions of children for years. He had his very own song you know so it took them to 93 to do that and then you come back in 2021 and you flub up well and also he was he was friends with your you know you talk about that kim in the documentary that he was friends with your mom and your aunts that yeah he, he was a family friend right he used Absolutely. to come visit us all the time so yeah yeah so it's, it's just disheartening that this keeps happening to us as a people as african-american people that Every time we do something extraordinary in America, it gets pushed to the side like it's never happened. And then when they come out to say anything about it, they use somebody else to make the story instead of using the original people in the story. So, And it's just real fishy how the story came out after your story. So I'm just going to call a spade a spade. My aunt, in, in, her, in her own words, talks about her agility. And when I listen to Brianna, guess what? Or Bianca, what's her name? Uh, Bianca. Bianca Blaze, I'm messing her name up. When I listened to Bianca Blaze last night, I heard my aunt's voice. That's what I heard. So I went back to look at her clips, right? I heard everything that my aunt said. Okay, I'm not taking away from her that she's the champion, right? But it took her five years, only five years. She overcame everybody that's been in there for years. And she's kind of built like my aunt. She kind of used my aunt's words. Then she got history stuff on her back. All she had to do was just do her research on her own, call us, right? So what they're talking about was a historic event is another slap in our face when we know our parents did the historic event. It may be historic for WWF or WWE, but it ain't history. It's WWE history. It's not real history. Real history, that already happened. And we have the receipts to prove it. The lady wrestlers were in such peak physical condition that they could have given their male counterparts a run for their money. We would take things that we would see and then go a different direction with them. We had this one particular hook where you could get catch a person in between your legs and turn it over with your back and spin them all the way around and then this way. Then you would do a kip up, you know, over that their uh, uh, chest, you know. Well, see, those type of things wasn't done, and they're not done now. In contrast to other lady wrestlers who had more stout body types, Ethel was compact yet strong. Now, most of the girls when I came up was huge. Mm -hmm. Most of those girls that's on those yeah, pictures you see, that they were tall, buddy, and their average weight was from 150 to 165. You know, at that time I only weighed 115. And I stayed 115 most of, most of the time I was in the business. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's the loss of wear and tear on your body because you're hell and heavy people. So you got to find a way to compensate for that, yeah. which I did by working fastly, you yeah. know, working quick. You know, I wasn't a slow person. Yes, there is, there is precedence. There's, there's history. This is, yeah, this is 2021 is not the first time that black people have excelled in professional wrestling. So yes, you just rightfully you want you want the history recognized. 
Right. And, 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 and document, documented properly. Being in the ring together either. And been a main event. Cause yeah, two because two and being main events back to back a long time ago when my aunt was the champion. You think she wrestled, she wrestled black women for her championship for them to try to take it. And the all white yeah. artist. So, yeah. yeah, and there's footage of, of of your aunts and your mom in, in the ring together. And a lot of times the audience didn't even realize they were sisters, but obviously they were in the same ring together. There, there's all kinds of press clippings of the other African-American women like Ramona Isbell, who's in the documentary, like Kathleen Wembley, like, uh, you know, Louise Green. They, you know, there's, it's well documented. There's press clippings of uh, the, the bills that list these women on the same cards as white men, you know, like you said, these championships that went on for the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, this, this is not new. Right. That's exactly right. And our family is what your movie is about, the three sisters, right? The three sisters that Absolutely. overcame things. And so I'm just thankful that you did that. And I'm thankful that you don't have to hear it in our words. Our aunt spoke it herself. Like I said, our family came from the ground to correct this. And we can feel their spirit and our ancestors over top of us. And if we don't address this and get this straight, then we could, you could just forget anything else about history. Because if they get away with this, then they feel like they can get away with anything. And they made up their storyline based on my Aunt Ethel. And yes, I said it. I said it because that's what it looks like. Well, again, I appreciate you all for being so outspoken for clarifying the history and making sure that it's it's correct for the generations that come and that your family legacy is is documented properly. Was there anything else you wanted to say or anything else that you'd like people to know? Yeah, I want to say this for me. Again, we need help from any independent filmmakers. We need you guys to help support Chris so that his his movie and his story and the story about our history, your history, will not be stolen by a big corporation because they think we're small people. So we need help. Like I said, Regina King, LeBron James, hey, Cardi B, anybody <laughs> out there that can help us out, I'm dead serious. Joe Schmo, wrestling fans, we need you guys to oh, get on oh, the bro. Oprah, so, Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris, yes, Vice President. Spike Lee, Lee, Kamala Harris. We need you guys, Joyce Beatty. We need you guys to help secure this history and this rich legacy. That's what we need. So that's all I want to say. And I want to say thank you to the people who have been supporting. And I want to let you know that God is going to see us through this. So help us out. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. That's the same. Really That's, appreciate I, she's saying it. The same. I thank you to all the fans, the wrestling fans who followed my mother Please. in her history to follow the, the sisters in their history. Thank you for speaking up and knowing the truth and speaking the truth. Yes, because without you, it would be our story against them. But they're the ones who has to prove it, not us. Well, it, it's been my honor to bring awareness to just amazing trailblazing women like like your mom and your aunts so is there a way that let's say the wwe or you know what let's say they want to rectify things or some of the you know the true genuine wrestling fans want to reach out to you and say hey i want to help you how would you prefer for them to get in touch with you well they can reach us on twitter right um Instagram. yeah give be sure to give your twitter handle so people will know okay. if you feel comfortable doing that <laughs> yeah I think I do. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll, I'll tell you what. I, 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 I don't mind. How about they reach out to you, Chris? <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm. I. I can take the heat. I'm. I have broad shoulders and a deep voice. So. And, and, Micaiah, my, <laughs> yeah. and Micaiah may take some calls, but I. But you know. And listen, we work we, together. We work together. Yeah. We don't mind doing interviews. But the thing is, we needed to make sure that our legacy was right first. So we have to come to the one who documented our legacy, which is you, because we're not only protecting their legacy, we're protecting yours too, Chris. Thank you, you know, thank you. we're really protecting yours it. too. Yeah, so if people want to reach out to the family and to me, go to ladywrestlermovie.com. You can reach me by email at ladywrestlermovie at gmail.com. And I'm on Instagram, Facebook, 
and Twitter under my name, Chris Borne. It's B as in boy, O-U-R-N-E-A. And I'm not hard to find. The New York Times found me. Okay. You want to give them your handle, Renee? Um, sure. If you guys want to reach um, out to me, my at handle on everything is Mrs. Renee, and that is M I S S E Z as in zebra, R E N E E. And also, our mother has an Instagram. It's the real Marva Scott on Instagram. So you can go onto Instagram and you can support us there too. And then, if you could um, tweet, and get on there and go crazy on the <laughs> WWE tonight, that'll really help because <laughs> now we have their attention. That's the only way you get their attention. We can't wait till the crowd leaves to hope they do the right thing. <laughs> right, right. Well, thank you all for being the brave women that you are. We know where you get it from. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. You got thank that you. right. Strong lineage, strong lineage, good bloodline. Absolutely, absolutely.